Good morning and welcome in everybody. Thank you so much for being here in day 169 of the income stream. Today we're talking about how I plan my live stream. So there's a little bit of, I don't know, meta stuff going on here, inception. Um, it's kind of cool. I'm excited to chat with you about this because after 169 days straight, I've learned a lot and I've gotten a really good and efficient system going. And whether you choose to go daily live uh, or you choose to go monthly live, or however often you choose to go live, I want you to be better prepared for when you go on so that you can have more engagement, you can feel a little bit more confident, and the people who watch the replay will also get a lot of value as well. Speaking of replay, if you're watching the replay here, hashtag team replay in the comment section. If you're here live, say hello to your fellow friends. Thank you again for accommodating to the brand new time, 9 a.m. Pacific and 12 p.m. Eastern. This is the time moving forward, at least from this point and until further notice. But anyway, thank you so much for being here. Hook me up with a thumbs up before we get started and let's enjoy the show. This is the Income Stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the Income Stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The Income Stream with Pat Flynn. Awesome, awesome, awesome. We're doing great here today. I want to say hello to a few people in the room. We got Karma Cash from the house, hashtag team live. Love that. The morning fun will now commence. Good to see you. Louis B uh, saying, or on the peasant. Uh, we got uh, Zenia and Vlada at Luke. We got good day, afternoon, good evening team. Luis, great to see you all. Appreciate you being here. Now, again, the topic of discussion today is going to be our lives. And if you haven't yet caught one of my lives, thanks for joining me today. Hit subscribe if you haven't already and make sure you hit that bell notification icon so you can get notified when new videos come up. And I have a new live stream come out every single day. In fact, we can check out just some of the latest that has happened here on the channel. I'm really excited and it's really interesting to see some of the data behind some of this in terms of which ones people love, which ones people maybe not so much, which days are getting more, which days are getting less, those, those types of things. And of course, the more you go live, the more that you can extrapolate that data and learn from it. But the one and the biggest thing to know is that when you do something again and again and again, you get better at it, you become more efficient, and of course, you get more confident when you do it too. The first, I would say, 30 live streams that we've had here on the income stream ever since starting back in March uh, were very much, first of all, very unplanned. Um, the first few were just basically Q and A's and going live for a Q and A is absolutely great, right? Because you can go and, and engage with people, you can answer people's questions, uh, you can help people out during that time, but that's not necessarily planning. Yes, you can plan for your Q and A and of course, when you plan anything and if there's something that is coming up, you wanna let people know about that ahead of time. Uh, so if you have a Q and A that you do maybe once a week or once a month, letting people know when and where that's happening is obviously very important. But today specifically, we're gonna talk about topic specific live streams, which are really great for different reasons. Yes, Q and A's are great because people have multiple questions about anything and you can have topic specific Q and A's, but when you come at it from an angle of here's what you're going to learn today or here's what I'm, what I'm going to teach you or here's what I'm going to show you, you definitely wanna structure it out ahead of time so that people who come in, whether they watch live or they watch the replay, they can actually feel engaged all the way through, they can uh, have their attention held all the way through and obviously get the value. And then of course you can teach them and begin to have people know, like, and trust you or to get confident enough to make a purchase with you or what have you. So I'm really excited about that. And I wanna dive deeper into that for sure. So where does this start? Topic-based live streams start with obviously picking a topic. So if you are struggling for what topics you might be able to create content about, obviously content on your blog, podcast, YouTube channel, and live, they all sort of come together in the same bucket as, well, what do we need to teach? What do we need to talk about? What do I need to show? Well, if you need some help, thankfully yesterday on the income stream, we talked about how to never run out of content ideas again. So on day 168 here, if you wanted to check that out and if you haven't caught it yet, let me know if you caught the replay or you watched that yesterday. Definitely a very, very valuable live stream that I would recommend you check out because this right here, you're, you're never gonna run out of ideas again. I also made some adjustments since yesterday too. Big thanks to Jonathan who told me that when I turned to this camera here, oftentimes the sound would deaden because I had the mic over here. Well, guess what? I moved the mic over here today. So Chad, if you can give me some quick feedback, let me know that the sound is still coming through and hopefully pretty consistent as I move between cameras here. 
Cool. So a lot of you watched yesterday. A lot of you got some value there. So if you are in need of some topic ideas, definitely episode 168 of the income stream, which is just on my YouTube channel, should be exactly what you need. But topics, how do we know, just generally speaking, if you don't have time to watch that or you haven't watched it yet, how do you know what to create live streams about? Well, the best and easiest way to do this is to just simply ask people questions. Uh, what do you need help with? What are you struggling with? And obviously you being the topic expert or somebody who's within this space, uh, you can, thank you for all the feedback, by the way. It looks like the sound uh, is doing great. Microphone move is fantastic. Fan great, it's literally like right under this camera now, but it's pointing toward me so that when I go here, it's still pointing toward me as opposed to the other one, which was the opposite angle. So thank you for that feedback. That's absolutely great. Okay, so topic ideas literally just asking questions. And I wouldn't worry too much about whether a topic is too big or too small. However long you choose to live stream for, that's how much time you'll put into it. And you can sort of reverse engineer from there in terms of how you're gonna get from where people are at to what you want them to come out with. Now the topic is number one, just starting with a seedling of an idea and what in and around that idea can we actually discuss and, and talk about and answer questions about during this time. But secondly, and more importantly, is what do you want the transformation to be, right? The topic may be podcasting, but the transformation is after this particular live stream, you're gonna learn how to monetize the podcast and actually learn how to get started doing that, right? That's the transformation. You didn't know how to monetize, now you're gonna learn how to monetize. Or maybe the transformation, again, about podcasting is we're gonna help you nail exactly what your brand is going to be for your upcoming podcast. So podcasts being a very general topic, is not as great as a, a little bit more specific where a person can go, oh, after this hour, after this half hour, after this time, I'm going to have something that I didn't have before. Like today, how to plan your live streams. Hopefully when you go live the next time and it's topic based, you'll at least have an idea of how to plan ahead of time so that you can get the maximum results. This something that you didn't know before perhaps, and now you will after this chat and we're obviously in the middle of talking about this right now. What's up, Vicky? Good to see you, Save Like a Bear. Jamming, great to see you, Zenia Vlada, Mai and Xavier. Uh, big thanks to all of the brand new members here. By the way, you might have noticed that some of the members here with green names in the chat also have now a dollar sign or dollar bills next to their name as opposed to others who just have coins. The longer you stay on a member, the emojis next to your name will grow and change. So I have a whole set of them that lead up to 12 months or an annual membership. And that way we can almost even celebrate and thank those. Uh, and I'm grateful for all of you who uh, stick around and become members. Or if you're a brand new member, you get some coinage and that's cool too. So going back to topics, right? Planning ahead of time. And this is something that literally we can do right now. If you haven't gone live yet, yes, you can spend all day thinking about it. You can read, you can listen, you can watch all the things in and around that. The best way to learn is truly just to get started. But picking a topic ahead of time that you at least know a little bit about and you can walk people through can be absolutely amazing for you to just kind of ensure that there's some purpose there for you and for the listener and, and viewer who's watching. Very common is just, like I said earlier, to go live just to go live. And there's really no reason to stick around. The reason why I love the idea of a topic-based live stream is number one, like I said, you can build hype and excitement for it, which we've talked about last week, how to build hype and excitement for an upcoming event. So you can check that out if you'd like. But more than that, you can actually give people reasons to stick around, right? Because we're talking about live streaming today, if you're at all interested in live streaming, you're going to stick around until the end because this is something that you wanna know about, right? So with whatever you choose to teach about, make sure that you, number one, pick a topic that people are interested, obviously, but number two, you can map out or bullet point at least the reasons why people need to stick around. There's now incentive to sticking around. This is why sometimes when we see other people go live on Instagram, which is a much more casual live platform, people going live, just kind of having conversation, people come in and out very, very quickly. As opposed to these live streams, sometimes people watch all the way through every single time because I plan ahead, I write in the description what you can look forward to and ultimately what you're gonna come out with this, right? What, what's, what's the ultimate outcome here? And that's what you wanna think about. This is obviously a way to approach any kind of content, a podcast, a YouTube video, or a blog post. Thinking about the end in mind and then convincing people this is where we're going and the kinds of things you need to do. 
and why we need to stick around. So that's sort of number one here, think, thinking about a topic specific for your podcast. By the way, Triple Gap Consulting, welcome to Team Flynn. Woo, Team Flynn Platinum, thank you so much for that. You are amazing. Uh, cool, so thank you. Um, secondly, I get a lot of questions from people asking, especially when it comes to my podcast, but also on live streams where it's very uh, topic specific. They're like, do you script it out? And it would be crazy for me to script out a live stream because one of the benefits of things being live is that it's ad hoc, it's impromptu, it's something that can happen on the fly and it's more natural that way, right? If I were to script this out, it might sound a little robotic because I might just sound like I'm reading the whole time. And even though I am sharing information about this topic, because I'm reading from a script, it might not come across as authentic. That was not scripted, but I pretended that it was scripted. Anyway, you can tell that the voice and the intonation changes. There's a lot of skill required to take something that you read and make it sound like a conversation. And again, the beauty of a live stream is we're having a conversation right now, or I'm teaching you as if I'm on a live stage right now. And yes, live stage presentations, especially TED Talks are scripted, but even then I wouldn't script out a live stream at all. What I would do, however, is I would absolutely either outline this thing massively or just know what stories I'm going to tell along the way. Sometimes it's not a teaching live stream that you're doing, but it's more of a storytelling one, in which case just focus on the main points of the story and again, the outcome, but bullet point the certain moments that you wanna hit or at least the path that you're gonna go down. But you don't need to script the whole thing. Part of the beauty of storytelling is the naturalness and the, and the conversation-like manner that stories can have. The more scripted it can be, the more it might just sound like somebody's being read to, for example. I saw a question here from Luke that was asking, hey, do you actually script your courses? Uh, I have and I have not, meaning there are some courses where I go into a very detailed outline, similar to what I'm talking about here, where I know exactly what the end goal of each lesson is, and then I can reverse engineer, okay, here are the steps to get there. And oftentimes when I do that, there's a lot of editing, but it can feel very natural, which is really nice because people will respond really well to that, but it does take a lot more effort if you don't script it, but if at least you know where they're going or where you want them to go, it can be a, a really great production. And plus, there's a lot of time needed up front if you do script things out. I will say, however, that a couple of my more recent courses, I've dedicated and invested that time up front to script things out such that when that teleprompter is reading that off for me and I can read it, and I've actually gotten pretty good at reading off a teleprompter and making it sound quite natural. A big tip for you, if you are going to transcribe and script something, that I would just write it out like you were talking. If you write it like an essay and then you read it, it's gonna sound like an essay and like a lecture, it's gonna put people to sleep. If you write like you talk, then you will talk like you've written. And that's gonna be the best and most natural way to do it. But there is a skill involved, a skill required to learn to be able to read from a transcript without, and, and again, having the transcript far enough away where your eyes aren't like reading like this, but also not too far where you can't see anymore and there's the speed control. Some transcription tools come with foot pedals, literally to speed up and slow down the script. It's kind of a, an amazing thing. In fact, we could probably do an entire live stream about just how to read from a teleprompter um, for your courses and for whatever, uh, to be honest. Anyway, love the chat that I'm seeing here. I love that. I did essays in high school. Boring, says Luis. Uh, yes, yeah, so I don't script, I outline. If I script anything, if I script anything, I script out the intro or the outro. And I don't often do this on live streams, but definitely if I'm gonna be on stage, um, and a live stream is like a virtual stage, obviously. Uh, if, if, I, if it's a really hard hitting and it's a big important topic, not that these other ones are not, but if I wanna go a little bit further, if I do wanna script something, it's gonna be the intro, the hook in the beginning of these videos, right? It's gonna be on stage, the two to three minute intro that really sets the tone for the rest of the presentation. Those I will script because I wanna nail every word and I wanna make sure it sets the right tone. And then I can get into a little bit more of a casual moment. And I've done that a couple times here on the live stream actually, where I've actually scripted the first couple moments because I really wanna hone in a hook for somebody, but I don't often do that anymore. In fact, over time you start to get a little bit more confident. I still will tell you, however, right before the clock hits now 9 a.m. before it was 8 a.m., I still get a little nervous. I still ask myself every day, 
why do I keep doing this? And then I remember you. I remember why I do this. It's because you're here, because you're spending time and dedicating time to be here. And you have to remember this about your audience as well. They are devoting and willing to spend this additional time with you that they could have spent elsewhere. And that's something that should uh, be worth you planning a little bit ahead of time to, to, to make their time worth it. But again, at the same time, it doesn't have to be perfect. But I want to thank you because every day before I go live, I see that blue broadcast button on Ecamm Live and I go, and I just literally hit it, right? I count down from five, five, four, three, two, one, go. Mel Robbins, five second rule. I practice that literally every single day. So thank you so much for inspiring me to go live. And it's funny because when I go live, finally, once I'm live and I've practiced the intro once or twice and I know where I want to take people, it just comes out naturally now. And you have to almost force yourself to do that, especially if you aren't comfortable doing this. Because I promise, all the stuff that's going through your head before you go live is the stuff that actually is just messing with your head, right? I remember, quick story time, by the way. And these stories, like sometimes they just come out of nowhere and other times they are legit planned, but this one was not planned, but I wanna tell you the story. And again, this is what's called a pattern interrupt where I switch the camera, I put on some music and we have story time and now chat, you know what to do with it, right? So I once watched an interview with Will Smith, you know, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, and he was telling a story about when he went skydiving and how he went into his psyche during that time because he was so afraid of skydiving. Well, he went up on the plane and he was remembering a lot of the thoughts that he was having on the plane, literally in the safest place you could be when skydiving, in a plane with a seatbelt on around a bunch of people. Like it was that time when he felt the most safe that he actually experienced the most fear because it was him own his own self starting to think about worst case scenarios and all these kinds of things. And I feel the same way very similarly before I go live or before I hit record or before I'm interviewed on another show or even before I interview somebody for my show. I have the very same feelings in the safest moments, the fear comes into play. But as soon as Will Smith jumped out of that plane, he said he experienced the most bliss he's ever experienced. In the time where fear should be there, the time when he's falling literally from the sky, free falling, when he could kaput on the ground and splat, that's in fact when he felt the, the happiest. And all that fear, all that anxiety was kind of for nothing, right? And I'm not saying we shouldn't experience fear and we shouldn't experience anxiety, but I think that, and I think this is a big lesson here, a lot of the same parts of the brain fire up. In fact, these same parts of the brain fire up when you're fearful of something and when you're excited about something. It's just a matter of the story that you write about those feelings. So now whenever I start to experience this fear every morning when I go live, I go, well, this just means I'm excited. And secondarily, it also means that this is important to me. I would in fact fear more if I didn't get nervous. If I didn't get nervous, it means I'm staying in, in my comfort zone. If I didn't get nervous, it means I'm not pushing myself as far ahead as I should. So Will Smith, thank you for that lesson. Appreciate it. And it just makes you think, right? The part at which he was probably in the most danger was the, spot, was the part where he felt the most happy. And so when we go live, yes, it can be a little bit nerve wracking. You start to think about, well, am I gonna be great? Are people even gonna show up? Are people gonna watch and listen? Of course, even if nobody shows up, it's still worth doing because people will watch the replay and just, it's good practice to speak to people in a live type setting because now when you create content anywhere, you're also having these feelings of actually talking to people live, even if, it, even if they're not live. Actually, in fact, the live streams here, our connection with, with Louie, Tondalea, Tim, Grandma Goody, my chair, everybody here, you've helped me create better podcast content because now when I'm on a solo show, I have now more practice speaking behind a microphone by myself and I imagine you there. And I think about people not maybe watching and commenting live, but watching and commenting or listening after the fact. And I think that's really powerful. I think that's absolutely powerful. So thank you all. Number three. So we talked number one about, you know, topic first and getting very specific about what these live streams are about, especially ones that are more planned ahead. I do wanna get into a little bit of the technical side of how I plan these things because I'm gonna show you right now just essentially how this works. 
So I'm here on YouTube right now. And the way that I do this, literally just to make it easy for myself, is I go up here, I click go live, and I'm actually very curious if it's gonna let me do what I wanna do because I'm literally live right now. So I don't know if I can, oh, I can, I guess. So this is me right now planning live streams. This is not where I manage my stream normally. Normally I'm on Ecamm Live. In fact, this is what I'm streaming through right now, Ecamm Live. If you wanna see more about the software that I use and the equipment that I use, you can go to patflin.com slash live setup. Again, patflin.com slash live setup. And you can see the whole setup there, the software I use, how I actually pop in these comments here and all these kinds of things. Um, like this one right here, Mai says, you are such a pro and massive inspiration. Thank you, Mai, I appreciate you. All that stuff I show you on my Ecamm videos as well as on patflin.com slash live setup. But right now I wanted to show you sort of how I every night, and I could in fact probably do this even earlier in the day. And I'm gonna do this right now for tomorrow because tomorrow's stream is already sort of figured out. It's Friday, so we bring out the wheel, we play some games, we do some giveaways. So I click on schedule stream here, and then I can actually pick from a template from before. So I have some templates, meaning like my casual Q and A's, or my weekend reviews, or my Friday giveaways, and I can just pick one that already exists that has the description already there, all the links in there, as well as just kind of a, a, a template. So I'm gonna click on this one because tomorrow's Friday, and I'm gonna do reuse settings. If not, I would hit create new and just create a new one from there. But this is how I schedule these things ahead of time, if that makes sense. So I'm gonna hit reuse settings. And again, I'm doing this live while live. So I'm, I'm hopefully it's gonna work out. So sometimes I change the title if it's sort of a recurring one. Uh, Friday, maybe I just might do Friday giveaways, games and more. Come, uh, come, join, come join us. So fur day. No, it's not, it's not a furry related thing. Uh, day 170. And this is a description that was already pre-written again because I'm reusing an older one. Uh, giveaways, games, questions and answers and more on today's Friday fun day version of the income stream. Watch, learn and have fun and maybe win some prizes too. So we'll talk more about that tomorrow if you come in. But now I wanna schedule it. I'm gonna schedule it for Friday. And then I'm gonna go to here and let's see, da, 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 where was it? 9 a.m. Here we go. Same thumb, same thumbnail. I'm just gonna use the same one there. And I'm gonna hit create. And literally it's it's going to, and again, hopefully this goes through because it, it might not because I'm literally live streaming right now and I might break the system. But if I hit refresh here, let's see if it actually comes up. Okay, there it is. So this is upcoming and tomorrow. So what I do now is I have a special link because I go live every single day that I want people to memorize. It's this one right here, patflin.com slash the income stream, uh, as, as you can see. Um, then I go to videos, and then I go to live, because this is a live video. So we can see the video that's live literally right now, which is this one, but this is the one that's coming tomorrow. So what I'm gonna do is go to details again, and what I like to do is I like to put it in uh, my playlist, my latest videos playlist. That way it shows because I have that playlist on my channel. And secondly, I like to grab this link here. Now I'm not gonna copy this link and make it the short link right now because people might come and wanna watch the replay later. I'll do that later. But this is where I grab the link because if I open this, in fact, I can see the room already available for tomorrow. This is the link that I wanna offer people ahead of time. If you're doing one a week, then make this happen as early as possible, blast that link out because people can now set notifications and reminders for themselves about that upcoming stream, if that makes sense. Now, I also see that the description is incorrect here in terms of the time. So I'm just gonna change this really quick. Thank you all in the chat for letting me know about that. 12 p.m. Eastern. Now, the thing about that, and let me hit save there really quick. This is a channel setting now that I have to fix because that description happens every time. And if I go to, I think, settings, kind of doing this on the fly, channel, oh, upload defaults perhaps. Okay, no, we're good. We're good, okay, I thought I thought this was a, so upload defaults is where you go if you, ha if you wanna have some links, like as you can see here, I have my social links, my, my website links, my live streaming links, the kit, for the equipment that I use, all that stuff. Um, some really important videos. I just have that in every video I create and that's in the settings one more time. And 
upload defaults and that's kind of where that uh, that goes down. So thank you so much for that. Cool. Dude, I got Jim Quick's Limitless book gifted. I'm so stoked. Jim Quick is awesome. Jim Quick is so cool. Uh, he taught me how to memorize names, in fact, uh, using what's called a memory palace. And there's so many fun things that we could do with, with that. I'm not a memory expert, although I've definitely studied it before. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun. Okay, cool. So let's see. Just checking. That got me a couple of times. Defaults. Uh, burr, 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 burr. Okay, I think we're good. Let me just check the, the time on this one more time just to make sure we're good. Actually, what happens if I open this link? Is it going to screw things up? So live in 23 hours, and I can just c come here and double check, schedule for September 4th. This is what people see before they come. They can actually chat with each other. And if you come in early on the income stream right here on this link, you'll see every day if you come in early, there's already people chatting and the chats and, and the community is sort of hanging out with each other before we go live. And it's cool because you can build anticipation. You can even go in and say something if you like. Hey, everybody. Thanks for being here. Excited for Friday. Let's go. And of course, nobody's in this room right now. It will also tell you how many people are waiting too, which is really cool. So anyway, this is how you set up things ahead of time, technically. And then what I do is I'll go to uh, patflynn.com slash WP admin. I go to pretty links. And in pretty links is where I then find my link that I change every day. This is the link I change every day. It's the income stream link. And this link will change to the new one maybe later this evening because this is what will then allow this link up here, patflow.com slash the income stream to remain the same, but it changes where it points to every single time. And this is a WordPress plugin called Pretty Links that makes it easy for me to keep the same link, this one that I'm flashing up at the top. And I just change where it points to every single day. That way people can just know that this is the link and I have to change it every day or you can have an assistant do that every day too. Uh, yes, the live chat will wipe the comments if you if you do it early. People, I think, will not see the comments that were previously made before they come in. And just so you can see, like over 10,000 people here have clicked on this link. Or it's been clicked 10,000 times uniquely by 8,000 people. Uh, so that works. I also have, just so you know, another one, which is just a, a, a redirect, right? So I have both patflynn.com slash the income stream and wait, how is this one? Oh, and this one, uh, so so I have it redirect. So so this is the main one here that I, that as you can see up top, but I also have patflynn.com slash income stream, which has been used ever so slightly. That's been only used 194 times, but that means people are mistyping it. So I have a pretty link for the wrong one as well. So that way I can just capture people no matter what, if that makes sense. What is the difference between pretty links and permalinks? Uh, permalinks are URLs that you see at the top. Pretty links just allows you to create a nice looking URL. If a, for example, the YouTube videos like u.be slash and all these numbers and characters, I can just pop that into pretty links and now it's just patflin.com slash the income stream. So that permalink is now nice looking and that's the one I share. Uh, there's two permalinks that play one permalink forwarding to another one if that makes sense. So it's a trackable link as well, but one that mostly I just use because it's very clean, but I can also see how often people are clicking on these links too. So that's really cool. Okay. Now, one more time, I wanna, I, I can't say this enough. We need to, again, remember how to get people from the beginning of the conversation that we have on the stream all the way to the end where the transformation occurs, right? So the topic that we talk about is gonna be really key. And of course, planning this ahead of time technically so people can get reminded and know where it is and kind of get there on time, all those sorts of things. It's treated almost like a webinar, although not quite as registered to get access to this or any, any of those kinds of things. Just saw a thumbs down coming. If that's you, I hope you have a better day. Still helps with the algorithm though. Thank you so much for that. Um, hope we can turn that frown upside down. So like I said, we need to go from where they're at to where we want them to go. This is where the topic comes into play in our outlining, the steps required, the stories, all those sorts of things. I do plan stories sometimes. If I know I wanna help people with something, I do plan, okay, at certain moments in this progression from where they're at now to where I want them to go, I will know ahead of time on my outline what stories I wanna tell. 
I don't outline the story. I don't do anything but have a bullet point in my post-it notes typically. My post-it notes are sometimes I have it on my phone right now. Today I have it on my phone as, as you can see there, just the outline of today's presentation. But this way I actually can go, okay, don't forget to tell the story about that one time this happened. And then what I can do is just when that it's time for story time and I know I wanna do it, I'm just like, hey, story time guys. And we do a pattern interrupt. That way I go from here, right? So I'm talking and hey guys, let me tell you a quick story. I see the story bullet point, the thing that I wanna tell. This is a nice pattern interrupt because people who were sort of, I don't know, tuned out a little bit can now get a little bit of a breather or a refresh or a reset, if you will. And then I switch to the camera, story time. And I, I wanna reemphasize this enough that as you can see, Karma here put the book, right? This is, I'm doing everything in my power I'm doing everything in my power to go, yo, guys, story story time. Like, But that would be rude if I was like, yo, hey, story time. Like, pay attention, right? I don't want to do that. That's rude. Unless that's your style, and then maybe you can do that. But that that's not my style. I just want to have a nice, smooth transition. There are times, however, where I include moments where... Uh, that are just available to me when I want them to be available to again. If I feel like during the live stream that maybe something was going for too long or I've been teaching for a lot or I've, been, I've just been talking a lot, there's a couple things you can do. Number one, just look at the chat and start reading things, right? Mention people's names as well as, as much as possible. Uh, for example, Elton said, pattern interrupt is this one. Wow, right? So that's something that we could do. Um, or I can just like pull something out and go, karma, sushi, gross. I disagree. I disagree. I think it depends on the sushi you have. You just haven't gone and gotten good sushi. You need to come to San Diego. I can, I can give you some good spots. Anyway, that's cool. Um, so just a quick, just chat, check in with the chat is often a good a, a good way to, you, you hear me do this all the time. Hey chat, let me know if there was value there for you. Let me know what the best tips so far that you've learned. Let me know, um, you know, there's standard ones like, hey, you know, hey chat, welcome in, thank you so much. Let me know where in the world you're popping in from. But I like the mid live stream pattern interruptions like that too, where I can just like Bruh. pop in a sound effect or something like that, or do story time. Sometimes if I have a punchline or a surprising thing that happened, like that one time I checked email and then all of a sudden all my emails were gone. Like I thought I literally lost everything. This is a technique that I do on Ecamm Live where I have a button that allows me to zoom in and it just goes to a much more zoomed in and I connected a sound effect to it. And you can do that too. Like you can you can have fun with it. The cool thing about live streams is number one, it doesn't have to be perfect. Number two, it's a blank canvas that you can literally create whatever you want in. And number three, you can have fun with it and you can, you can excite people and entertain people, right? And that's the other thing about this. This isn't just a presentation. Presentations I think are boring. It's edutainment, right? This is education and entertainment combined. And you might be thinking, hey, I'm not an entertaining person. You just have to be yourself and you're gonna attract the right people. Your vibe attracts your tribe. One more time. Your vibe attracts your tribe. Quoting Chris, uh, my buddy Chris Ducker there, right? So um, that's really important, right? How can we keep people entertained during this time, these pattern interrupts, these stories that you tell, maybe knowing that you have a video that you wanna share, or you wanna share your screen at some point, right? Then you can do that. You can just do a screen share and do a little demonstration to mix it up a little bit, and that's a little bit different. Or you can go, yo, <laughs> what are y'all doing here? You guys are hilarious. Three people waiting for tomorrow. I got four thumbs up already. Hey, that's good. Thanks guys, I appreciate that. Manny, Michael, Manos, you guys are funny. Thank you. Okay, so anyway, as you can see, there's not really much to it. I could go on and on and on and on about the different things that we do to make these live streams even better. But the most important thing is when it comes to planning, picking a topic ahead of time, understanding the transformation that I wanna offer, what points am I gonna be making, what stories am I gonna be telling, figuring out in an outline where I want those to fit in can be great because now I have a roadmap. And then during the live stream, making sure to have people understand where that roadmap is and what the ultimate outcome is going to be. From there, you kind of just have to practice and get better at it. And over time, you will get better at it, I promise you. So I'd like to spend the rest of this time after talking about planning live streams now because 
honestly, after doing this every single day, I do what I can to make this as easy as possible. Now, the question is, when do I plan this, right? I'm typically thinking about the topic a day ahead of time. Sometimes there are rare cases where literally in the mornings of the stream, I um, have yet to even plan out the outline because maybe the topic is one that I know uh, quite a bit, but I haven't yet outlined the roadmap. And sometimes when I'm in the shower or having coffee or something or out in the garden, I'm also just thinking about, okay, well, how do I know, how, I, how do I want to get people from here to there? And I can just really quickly on my phone, pop in a number of things, reorder them, and then just trust myself to go and share these things. Um, and that's really all it takes. And it, it, it takes practice. And again, after 169 days, you get pretty good at something no matter what it is you do for that often. But I would just recommend you start for sure. So let's go in the comments section and let's see what questions I can answer for you. I'm happy to answer questions for the next 24 minutes here for you. Let's see. Maya says, how long do you take to plan your outline? It depends on the topic. Sometimes I'll spend... 20 minutes, I would say max on it. If I have the topic, yeah, 20 minutes max, sometimes literally five minutes. Again, it's because I'm going live daily. I know and I, I'm, I'm almost needing to do it quite quickly, but I love that constraint as well. I would even put a timer for five minutes and just go, okay, if I'm gonna be talking about this topic and I wanna deliver the highest value, just let me brainstorm really quickly all the topics and then put them in the right order, right? And this way I can start to map things out. And that constraint of doing it in just five minutes almost forces you to make it great because you don't want to add fluff. What within this five minutes can I pull out that's going to be the best? And that's kind of cool because it's working with you and you're forced to do it in a shorter period of time. And then of course, save time after that. David says, when it comes to planning, choose the topic, put together an outline for a roadmap. That's essentially it, right? And hopefully going a little bit deeper into those details today is really helpful because I know on the surface, it's like, oh, you could have told us that in five minutes. But I know that if I were to just tell you that in five minutes, it's not going to be done. I need to go into these uh, bigger details for sure. Natalie says, oh, hey, great to catch you live for the first time. Watch a number of the replays. Thank you, Natalie. Bruh. Appreciate you. And I'm glad you're here. Can you show us an example of an outline? Uh, yeah, I can. Let's see if I can pop one up for you here. So yesterday, I had a, I'm trying to see if I can do this. Yesterday's live stream was about how to never run out of topics. And I'm just going to show you the outline that I wrote that morning. Let's see if I can pop this out. Sorry. So I can, this is the outline for that. What are people asking about? A, just ask. B, social media, mass and direct. C, Google, D, YouTube. And then I actually did demos of that during that time. Two, what are people struggling with? Email, ooh, a teacher got a package today. A, email autoresponder, and then I went deep into that. B, forums and groups, I went deep into that. Then part three, what are what's already trending? Popular on your blog or in analytics? In books already, I demoed what it was like to go into Amazon and do that. C, pop culture, what's happening today? Telling a story about that related to Daryl Eves. I didn't add that on there, but that just came to mind when I was talking about it. Then four and five, other things. And then finally, finishing up with taking notes, right? So that's an example of an outline. You can see not too much, not too much. Hey, thumbs down. Hope you have a better day. Appreciate you though for helping with the algorithm. So does this help um, Manny or anybody? Let me know. So that's the outline for yesterday. So as you can see, just kind of like A, B and lowercase a, lowercase B and just kind of that's it. And that's my guide. That's my roadmap. And that's enough for me to go off of because then each one of those things becomes a topic that I can expand on, if, if that makes sense. Thank you for that question. That was great. That was from Manny. Consult the Blonde Guy says, don't forget to hit the like button. Let's get Pat to 100 thumbs up. We're almost there. I think we're going to do it. I'm not going to ask because I know you guys are going to deliver and make it happen for sure. Simple but looks very effective, Pat Flynn. Good stuff. You're welcome. Yeah, anytime you guys want to know about something, let me know. Vicky says, how do you decide which topics to focus on? It could be a number of different things. Number one, what are people asking most about? Um, number two, what's a hot topic right now? Number three, it could just be what What am I most excited about right now? What can I get fired up about that I could push forward? So it's almost a combination of all those things. I don't get necessarily into giant Venn diagrams or you know poll numbers or anything like that. Um, just whatever I feel can be most helpful and that in combination with what I'm excited about will be for a good mix. Excuse me. If 
questions, 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 questions. GTO, Pat is so good at the live streams. Lots of reps. Indeed, lots of reps. You're never good at something when you just start out. So you got to get started. Grandma Goody says, seeing your outline and all that goes on behind the scenes is so valuable. Thanks, Grandma. I know you like that. Thank you so much. <laughs> Yesterday was also thumbs down. I wonder if it's always the same person. If it is, hey, if that's what helps them feel better, then that's fine. I'm happy to use my platform for somebody else like that. Gabriella says, I'll remember that when I try to go out in the heat and just start seeing hallucinations. Yeah, it's going to get hot this weekend, everybody. It's going to get hot for sure. Uh, let's see. Question from Karma here. What do you do if you accidentally breeze through all your notes and finish early? Just Q&A after, or do you try to expand and do what you just spoke on? Literally what I'm doing right now, Karma. Got through it in about 30 minutes. There's no reason to add additional fluff to it. It's 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 exactly what it needs to be. And then just go into Q&A. Just go into Q&A or start to come up with other stories that you might be able to tell or perhaps even shift to another topic. It's totally okay to do that. And I know that you are putting your reps in as well and probably you've experienced sort of just like ending early, if you will. Just keep people going Q and A. That that can work a very long uh, that can work a very long way for sure. Xavier, thank you for the super chat. I appreciate you. That's going to help out some teachers this month. We are in fact supporting teachers as a family this month, and I've already donated over a couple thousand dollars to help with just already in September. It's only September third, but we bought a lot of stuff for teachers who are paying out of pocket to help them during this time. Hey Pat, just join Share What You Know Summit. It looks awesome. Thanks so much for all you do. Yeah, the Share What You Know Summit's going to be awesome. That's being held by Teachable. It's literally like 10 bucks to join. we got Gary V and a bunch of other people sharing their stuff, and it's going to be a lot of fun. Thank you, Xavier, for uh, getting to be a part of that. Hey, hi, it says, I just bought a Rode Video Mic Pro, but I don't have enough money to get a podcast mic like Shure or Zoom Recorders. How can I make podcasts with just this mic that I have? Well, the Rode Video Mic Pro is one of those mics that happen to go on the top of your DSLR camera, right? I've heard of people using that, to be able to record. What I would do is I would plug it into your computer just to see what the sound quality is like. Plug it in, see if it'll work. I've seen it work in some cases. You just wanna make sure that it is propped up in a way that's gonna be pointing at your mouth because it is a shotgun mic and um, not just like lay it down or lay your camera down, but actually have it somehow point up toward your mouth and then just record and see if it actually captures the sound. I think different computers will respond differently depending on the input uh, capability. But what you might need to do is when you plug it in, because it's a microphone and you are plugging it into likely the headphone jack, you need to make sure that the input is actually the microphone as well. And again, test to make sure and actually tap on the microphone when you're recording to just make sure that it is actually capturing that audio. All right. Question from GTO. Recently, I found that even when I am parked on the live stream page, the stream does not start automatically. Any ideas why? I've been three to four minutes behind all week. That's interesting, GTO. It should pop in automatically. It could be an older version of your browser, perhaps. If you wanted to upgrade your browser, I don't know what you might be using. If you're on Internet Explorer, I'd recommend getting on something like Chrome instead. But that could just be a matter of making sure, and, 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 and I'm sorry that happens, but if you're parked on the live stream and it's already happening, what I would say is you can just refresh the page uh, pri probably right around the hour. And you know that I start pretty consistently on the hour, so you can just hit refresh and hopefully get in from there. But yeah, I don't know why that's that's happening. That's really interesting. All right. This is so good. I want to start going live with All Women Rock YouTube channel, but I've allowed fear to hold me back. There's nothing to fear, Tamara. Plus, you're going to be helping people directly, and people can be watching those replays. Imagine how that's going to affect people's lives. Don't let that fear get in the way of doing that for sure. What's up, QFAM? Sorry I missed so much. Glad to check in momentarily. Thanks for being here, Francis. I appreciate you. All right. Kimberly says, let's see. Sorry if I missed this. What streaming software do you recommend? If you're on a Mac, I would highly recommend Ecamm Live. I use Ecamm Live. I love it. Uh, Patflin.com slash Ecamm Live if you want to check it out. I have another video. If you actually look up Ecamm, or if you look up streaming software for Mac, on YouTube, in fact, I could show you how to do this because I think I've had a lot of people ask for questions about this uh, lately. Uh, if we go to YouTube, streaming software for Mac. See, I'm doing a lot of gardening videos. You'll see my video pop up number two here. Let's play the intro. 
Stuck so right now you're looking at my regular camera view. However, if we push this out just to, now you should see all the things I have at my disposal on my desktop that I see when I broadcast live. And when I conduct my live streams on Facebook and YouTube and Twitch. Anyway, best streaming software for Mac. You'll find my video there. Uh, really quick, just big shout out and happy birthday to Rockstar Gamer YouTube. Sharif, happy birthday to you. And I hope you have an amazing day. Let's see. Okay, walk. Missed some today. Hope it's not a dupe question. What are some simple pattern interrupts that can be done on one camera? So pattern interrupts obviously can be helpful if you kind of can flip between cameras, but you might not have the ability to do that. So some simple quick ones are to create moments where you can zoom in. Depending on the software you can use, you can do a zoom in like this so that in certain moments when you have a really important point, you can just go, you know what? You're awesome. And that's a little easy pattern interrupt. Obviously sound effects. Ooh, sound effects can work really well too. And that's a nice pattern interrupt. And of course, just storytelling, right? Getting into a story, maybe even having some music to go behind it. All right, so we need to talk about what happened the other day. And of course you can have different kinds of music like, yo, it's time to get serious. And I, I'm just kind of messing around now. But as you can see, there's many different ways to do pattern interrupts. Um, storytelling can be great. Also just getting back into the chat and referencing people's names every once in a while can be great too. Just kind of going back and forth between the chat and you, not necessarily another camera and you, if that makes sense. Rhino Dog says, thanks Pat for all this valuable information. You used what you shared yesterday to email several leaders, pastors to answer a couple questions through SpeakPipe to feature on podcast episode. Awesome, nice job Rhino. Keep up the good work. StreamYard is great as well. StreamYard. I know Carmen uses, I've been on the guest end of Karma's show before, and StreamYard is a beautiful process for bringing guests in, which is really cool. And I think that, um, yeah, Mac or PC, very valuable. Chris says, a very real consideration people need to have about going live is making sure they have enough upload speed to support their live stream yeah and obviously also making sure that your audio is great there's some technical things that need to happen but definitely good enough internet speed i don't know what the minimum would be chris do you have any thoughts on what the minimum upload speed would be i would say maybe 20 megabytes per second um at minimum but i mean i've seen people go live with less less than 10 sometimes and that can go very well too so again again it depends try to hardwire yourself versus going wi-fi if possible and just try to stack things in your favor to make that great. So I'm just plugging in a plug-in cord here. Sweet. Question, do you know the availability date of Ecamm Live feature you use to interview Jess? I use StreamYard, but I have an Ecamm Live subscription and would prefer to use it. They're still in beta right now, and I've gotten early access to it because I'm a top affiliate. So they are continually making improvements. It's almost there. I don't necessarily know when the launch date is, but I'm assuming it's gonna be very soon because this is a highly requested feature. And obviously it's something that we all can't wait for publicly, but it is great. What happens is essentially there's another panel that you see that is for the interviews and you see yours there. And then you see anybody else who you give a link to show up there as well. And that's the green room. And then on top of each of those videos, I can click add left, add right, solo, and I can sort of manage where they are in the stream video, um, even though they're sitting there in the green room sort of waiting. And it's just a, it's, it's just a link that you share and it's pretty cool. It's, it's really, really easy. I thought Mac is only used by hipster programmers with large beards. Yeah, that's most of them, but not everybody. What's up, Text Creatives? Loves from Pakistan, great to see you here. End of Q3, I heard, says Karma. Cool. That's great. Please tell us what is the best YouTube video live or audio podcast live? Uh, what do you mean, Hindu, Hindi? Let me know. Please tell us what is the best YouTube video live or podcast audio live? Um, 
I mean, if you're looking for a video to help you learn how to go live, I mean, this could be it, this video right here that, that, that you saw. And if you came in later, obviously you can watch the replay, but this will give you some insight on how to go live. If you wanna learn about how to find topics for what to talk about on your podcast or live streams, check out yesterday's live stream, which was 168. And um, we're doing 170 tomorrow. How crazy is that? How crazy is that? Any recommendations software for Windows? Uh, I would recommend StreamYard to do live streams. StreamYard, which can then um, stream to YouTube, to other things. It could be really great. You could record. I was once on the receiving end or a guest on StreamYard where it wasn't even live. It was literally just used to record a video interview and it wasn't live at all. And this person's gonna be re-editing those things and popping them into a YouTube video later, which is pretty cool. Great questions, by the way, let's keep going. Chris says, do you have any time management techniques when you're speaking on a topic or is it just a matter of experience? Time management techniques when you are speaking on a topic. Uh, Chris, can you go a little bit further in terms of what you mean about time management techniques about a topic? Are you essentially meaning how long do you talk about a specific thing before you move on to the next? Or are you talking about literally how to fit it into your day kind of thing? Pat, how do you get proper music for free for my podcast episodes? Um, you wanna look for what's called royalty-free music. Uh, there are places and in, 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 uh, libraries where you can get royalty-free music. You can look them up um, and you can check that out. I would also check out uh, Stream Beats from Harris Heller, although you're only gonna get a certain and limited amount. It would be worth uh, investing into something like artlist.io or audiojungle.net for single tracks to be able to just continually have music that you're allowed to use. The last thing you wanna do is use non-royalty free music and either have to take your thing down or perhaps get a cease and desist letter, which I know some of my friends have had before because they've used the wrong audio. The other thing is maybe it's just one song that you have repeat to create some audio branding so that you don't necessarily have to have new music every single time. Question from Scooby Life, hey Pat, how can we use your Streambeats friend for background and YouTube videos? Can you walk through? They have some cool ones. Uh, they they definitely do. So if I wanted to provide some background music, what I would do is I would go to YouTube, Stream Beats, and I'm gonna just click this. And this just plays automatically. I can just have it in the background. This is what I do on Sundays when we have our casual days here. And I think that the most important thing is with whatever streaming software you're using, you need to have your audio from your computer come into the stream as well. And Ecamm Live allows me to do this, to have my desktop audio come into the stream as well. So now we're having some little background music. And what I'm using right now, for those of you who don't know, is called Stream Beats. It's literally just a playlist on YouTube. There's one on Spotify as well. And this is royalty-free music that a fellow live streamer whose name is Harris Heller from Alpha Gaming created literally for this purpose. And it's it's free to use and it's it's really cool. He's just, he, he created these for us. Uh, which is pretty awesome. So we're gonna keep the music here for the rest of the time if that's cool. And we're almost at 100 likes, so we have nine more to go. So hit that thumbs up and we can see if we can make it happen. We've got a few more questions to answer. Sam, Pat, love your info. Love you too, Sam, thank you. Is there a chance of using Disney music on videos and podcasts? Uh, very, very unlikely, especially for a company like Disney, which has just like automation and tools and people and boards of lawyers that are just looking for this kind of stuff. Um, you could potentially get away with 30 seconds or less, don't quote me on that, but it's called free use, um, or excuse me, fair use, uh, where you can, if you are indeed sharing clips of something and then commentating on that and, and not changing it around or not using it and selling it, it may be possible. I would look up fair use YouTube videos and how to manage that more legally. I'm not a lawyer or an attorney myself, if that makes sense. Cool. Let's see. Susan says, if I should be sticking, question, if I should be sticking with one thing at a time, I think podcasting, blogging, and the like, should I not be integrating video until I have others done? Um, I wouldn't try to stack too many things all at once. I would try to go one, maybe two platforms at the beginning. I would actually recommend just one to get started now. Maybe it's a podcast with a website to support the podcast, but not a podcast and then content coming out consistently there and a blog and content 
coming out consistently there. And definitely not a YouTube channel with content coming out consistently there. A lot of people see that I have a blog, a YouTube channel, I have these live streams, I have multiple podcasts. They're like, oh, Pat can do it, I can do it too. Yes, but not all at the same time, right from the beginning. We gotta make sure that we focus on one thing at a time to give it enough of a chance to actually sprout and do what we need to do, right? If you put too many seeds into one container, they're all gonna, all the roots are gonna start competing for each other. They're all gonna suck out the nutrients and you're gonna have to water for more plants and it's just not gonna work out. One is eventually gonna take over the others. So you might as well just start with the one that you're most excited about, the one that you think is going to be the uh, best one for you and then go from there. Man, I'm watching at 10 p.m. from Asia. Thank you, Self-Improvement Addicts, for staying up with me. Specifically, how do you stay within a time limit when speaking? Do you simply eliminate talking points? Is there a better method? Yeah, I mean, over time, I mean, the outline is really helpful, right? Like, it would absolutely behoove you not to create an outline before you create your live stream because now as you go along you can kind of see engage maybe you're halfway through 30 minutes within an hour and you're halfway through the outline you know you're on pace versus maybe you're halfway through the live stream and you've literally only talked about one point you may need to either speed things up or condense things and have a part two later all those kinds of things can um can, can benefit you so it just it takes practice it's not a five minutes I'm gonna talk about this one and you have a timer and you're looking about all these things. I would think that just having an outline and understanding sort of like where things fit in within the hour that you have. And, and then over time, you're gonna understand, wow, I have the time to share all this stuff or, oh, I don't have the time to share all this stuff. And um, you can go from there. How do you know which platform is best for you? Um, it could be a combination of what are you most excited about? It could be one where you fast forward even six months ahead of time and say, hey, I can imagine myself continuing to do this even six months from now, even a year from now. So that's how you can gauge that excitement because a lot of times we're excited for right now, but when we step into the, the, the into the DeLorean and plan for the future, we can go, oh, maybe it's not the kind of day I want. It's not how I want to live. It's not how I want my day-to-day -to, -day to be. Or maybe it is and you can get excited about that if that makes sense. I think that also, um, Karma, thank you for the, for, the, for the super chat, my friend. I appreciate you. Um, and then also where you think your audience is and where you, you know you can connect with them, right? There might be other partners or other people who are doing the same thing that you know that you can have a good relationship with or can imagine doing so. And in which case you can build and start to build your audience and platform there too. Scooby says, if I watch Pat Flynn at 10 p.m. at night, my brain would be spinning all night with ideas. Martin, Pat Flynn, just a quick thank you. Just checked on Google Incognito how I come up and search my podcast now show, Fusebox Rocks, all sending traffic to my site. You're welcome, my friend. You're welcome. All right, last question I'm gonna answer from Rockstar Gamer since it's his birthday today. What is your question? I would love to answer it before we finish up. I gotta go in one minute. We got to 100 likes. Thank you, everybody. Awesome. I like the new time. It gives coffee the time to kick in. Liking the music, Pat. Thank you. I'm gonna turn it off, though, because we're about to finish up. I'm gonna do a nice, slow... Kind of like, you know, turning off the music before the announcement. Ah, okay. Rockstar wants to know how to pla how to live stream on one's phone. Um, yeah, you can literally do this. In fact, uh, YouTube Creator app has, uh, YouTube Studio has the ability, I believe, for you to do this. Um, and also, I believe, uh, I don't think there's an Ecamm Live um, app, but there is def there's definitely ways to do this. In fact, the easiest way to do this would be to go live instead, at, or at least to start on Instagram Live or, or, or Periscope, which is Twitter's live. Um, and that's really easy to go and do from there. So, whew. Hey y'all, we talked about a lot of things. Thank you so much. I know there's some more questions. You can pop them into the comment section after this gets processed and I can come in later and answer those questions for you. For right now, I gotta head out. I wanna appreciate you so much. Thank you so much for coming in today. Tomorrow is Friday, which means come in here 9 a.m. Pacific, noon Eastern for some fun games, giveaways, and all that great stuff. Come in tomorrow early if you can so you can communicate with the rest of the team here. And again, 
one more time. I appreciate you so much. Thank you. You're amazing. Great day today. And as always, Team Flynn for the win. Peace out, y'all. This is the income stream to help you achieve your dream. Oh, while we keep it clean, this is the income stream. It's the kind of show where you can come and go, but then you leave inspired with no fee required. The income stream with Pat Flynn. Hey y'all, appreciate you. If you happen to be going through tough times right now, just know that there's a family here for you. We appreciate you. We are here for you if you need anything and just, you know, things will get better. Appreciate you. I'm here for you. Peace out, y'all. Much love. Bruh.